design workout. So one of the people I'm working with is doing home workouts as well. This is gonna help complement their running. So we're gonna start with funny walks today. So we're warming up the ankles to start, right? So you're going to walk on the insides of your feet. So kind of turn your arches out, lift your pinky toes up in the air and walk there for 10 steps. Then you're gonna walk on the outsides of your feet for 10 steps. Then you're gonna go up on your tippy toes for 10 steps each leg and then really think about you're doing heel walks but really think about like the back of your body stretching and the front of your body lifting up so it's not just toes that lift up it's your whole ankle that's lifting up as you take those 10 steps so 10 of everything there um the order doesn't really matter that much i usually prefer to do the hard ones first so i can kind of see how my day is going to go um the next thing that we're going to do once your ankles have been moved around in lots of different directions is sassy toe taps so Think about like in cartoons how they show people being really impatient and like tapping their foot. It's kind of like that, but instead of having this bad posture, you're going to scoop everything in, stand up really tall, and start by tapping. And if that feels pretty easy, then you can think about rotating open from the hip. It's not actually easy on this side for me, but rotating open from the hip and tapping at different angles and kind of seeing where your body has a catching point. So like this is a weird angle for me, probably from the knee surgery I had. Um, so you'll do up to 30 seconds on that side if you are on that exercise, sorry, per side. Um, and if that doesn't happen for you, that's totally fine. Just do what you can, right? So the next thing we're going to do is bent knee calf raises. So straight leg calf raises like this works the upper part of your calf or your gastrocnemius. And then when we do a bent knee one, so you still start out standing up tall, push your knees over your toes, and then think about pressing your toes into the ground, not clawing. This one's gonna work your soleus, or it's like a big thick calf muscle that runs the length of your lower leg. And then back down. So you're trying to make this as smooth as possible. So if you notice that things are kind of like a little shaky going down, just know that that's your body trying to figure out what to use in that moment. So think about, can I spread my pinky toe? Is my foot actually even on the ground? Am I rolling out to the side of my ankle? Just kind of like play around with foot position and see if you can make the quiver go away. And if not, it might just be something you're working on right now and it'll get better over time or ask questions and all. Um, so after those, you're going to do 10 to 20 of those. So 20 is like the cap. Don't do more than that. Um, and if you can't even get to 10, that's fine. That's a working point, right? So single leg skier rocking is what we're going to finish this little lower body part with. And we're going to do up to 30 seconds each side. So again, belly button up and in super tall posture. So versus pulling your shoulders back and like flaring up your rib cage, think about lifting your heart and your belly button straight up in the air so you're longer. And then I'm gonna stand on my left leg, toes are spread nice and wide, and I'm kind of like shifting my weight, but I'm not shifting my body. So like my weight is in my left leg right now, I can pick that leg up and not really shift, but I'm not shifting over to the side, right? So up tall, kick your heel, kick your toe, kick your heel, kick your toe. So this leg, is just there bouncing forward and working on building up all the muscles around the knee. This is really good for deceleration and running. So being able to slow down once you've run fast, running down hills, hiking, just in general, it's really good to help strengthen all the muscles around the knee and it will get kind of burning. So up to 30 seconds there, pick whatever side you have a harder time balancing on. So like my left leg is harder for me to balance on. I would have that one be the rocking leg first. Um, just again, to start with the non-dominant side. So. That's the lower body part of this warm-up. Now we're gonna move on to the trunk and diaphragm part of the warm-up. So we're gonna start with tabletop inhale to reach. So tabletop position, you are going to push your feet to the ground, think about opening your chest, and feet are pushing down so much that you feel your abs engaged, so like belly butt kind of comes up to meet spine. So from here, I'm gonna keep three points of contact on the ground as I inhale to reach my right arm as long as I can. So I'm trying to feel from my like right middle finger all the way down to my hip, kind of stretching. Exhale back down, inhale other side up, exhale back down. And kind of notice, like when I pick my right arm up, I feel pretty solid. When I pick my left arm up, I feel like I have to think about not shifting more. So just kind of pay attention if you have something like that. And most people are gonna have a dominant side, so it's not like it's a big deal. Just put a little more attention into the non-dominant side, right? So six per side there, then you'll flip over for dead bugs. So from here, you're gonna keep that ab engagement that you just did in that tabletop position. So long body, but solid. And then lift your legs up. So knees, ankles, and hips are all bent at 90 degrees. 
hands reach up towards the ceiling, and then I'm gonna kick my left heel point, so the heel should be the furthest thing away, so you stretch the back of your leg, and then my right hand up. So left heel point, right hand reach away from each other, exhale, return to the center, inhale, kick that right heel and left hand, so if you're finding that you're feeling this in your spine and your lower back a lot and not really in your abs, change the position so you can put like a little towel under your butt while you're working on that or you can just keep your leg a little bit higher to the point where you do feel it in your abs versus your back. So six per side there. And then we're gonna do split stance truck rotations, split stance, and then I usually put my hands here. Try and think about keeping your hips right under your ribs you're going to inhale towards the right, hips stay forward, exhale towards the left, hips continue to stay forward. So I'm mainly focusing on twisting through my rib cage. So inhale right, exhale left, and then you'll do uh, six per side there. So it's six twists per direction per leg that's forward. Um, if you can, always exhale to the left on this specific movement, not always in life, but for right now, give it a try. So, that has been our ramp up. Doesn't feel like a warm up. It's actually like pretty intense as we go through it. So do that. Um, one time through should be fine. If there's anything specific that you're like, oh, that feels good, I wanna do it again. Go for it, but you don't have to. So uh, stay tuned next for the strength part. I hope this has been feeling good so far and we'll get into the strength next. All right, peeps. You did your ramp up part of your workout so that way everything should feel pretty good or at least you know how your body's feeling today. And we're gonna start with dumbbell bent pulley rows. So you're gonna grab your dumbbells, get set up in a bent position. So I always like to coach people by pressing your toes down, not stretching. So push your toes into the ground so you kind of feel that engage. Lift your belly button up and in and then reach your heart forward and your hips back as you bend your knees. So this is your bent position. From here, you're going to initiate the movement with your back. So I'm gonna start the movement by pulling my right shoulder blade kind of down and back towards my butt, hand goes towards my hip, and I just tilt a little bit to the side, twist a little bit to the side. Inhale, back down, exhale, twist to the other side. Inhale, back down, exhale, twist. So the important thing to remember, the row is what starts the movement. So I'm not twisting and then pulling up here because that's gonna be like upper neck and upper back, right? and we're trying to get it down in here, similar to how arm swing works when we run, right? So that's why these ones are on here. It's also just a good movement to help with thoracic um, mobility and strength at the same time. So you're gonna do eight to 10 per side there. One common thing that happens is when people are rowing, their hips are kind of doing this too. It's not bad, but try and see if you can keep it mostly in your trunk versus having to shift back here. That's like a different thing. Um, again, not bad, but not what we're doing today. Um, the next one, slow marching with overhead lever. So, slow marching, we're gonna have you alternate knee drives and you're going to lever your arms up as you do it. So I'm standing up super, super tall. I'm going to inhale as my arms lever up and my knee lifts. Exhale, back down. Inhale, lift the other leg up, lever your arms back, exhale, back down. So you're kind of thinking about squeezing your arms in towards your body and then swooping everything up so that way your arms are in socket and it can help, again, with arm swing and knee drive. It's also pretty challenging on balance, which is part of why it's on this program, um, and it's good for your abs. So, uh, eight to 10 per side there. The final thing on this workout is side plank rotations. So, you may do, Full length side planks, knee side planks, I have no preference, they're gonna be hard no matter what. So, you're gonna start with your elbow right under your shoulder and try and think about opening your chest. If you're doing a knee plank, you wanna have knees, hips, ribs, shoulders all in line. And if you're doing full, you wanna have your heels reaching away as far as you possibly can, elbow pushing into the ground and everything stacked. So, get into your side plank and you're gonna reach one arm up, big breath in, and then you're gonna rotate, try and thread that arm through keeping your heels reaching away, and then inhale up, exhale, to twist. So this one, super hard for obliques, really good for your whole spiral line, and also great for shoulder stability because you're working through that posterior shoulder capsule as you do it, which is also going to allow your arms to move more freely when you're running. So 
This one is also eight to 10 per side. With this one, do like two to four rounds and see how you feel. So good luck with these. See you soon.